Hey guys, getting a little video of Boomerang. He's rocking it. I love him. I love him too, but we're home. Um, this dog is always so happy to work. It's awesome. And that's a lot of like just how we set up the puppy stuff in the beginning. We teach them that it's that it's awesome to work and they want to keep doing that. So um, what we're doing is I'm starting to phase him to more off-leash obedience. So how we do that is that Boy, as I just start to drop the leash. This is a long line. It's hard to film it behind me. There we go. And I use my e collar more so, and I'm rewarding with food. So if he gets out of position and I say boomer heel, I'm going to use e collar and then follow up with food. So, really good things for him. Boomer heel. Good boy. I just look at his collar. So I want that yellow collar to be in line with my leg. Good job, Boomerang. We also will go to this fence. There's a little dog that pokes its head out. It's a good distraction, huh? Boomer, down. Good. Good job, big guy. So the downstays are, he's rocking it on the initial part of it. Now we just want to make sure that he's maintaining the stay of it. So I come back to him after I walk away from him and I feed him. And I watch his elbows. I don't want his elbows to pop up as I come in with the food. And so this is just how I condition it. I leave you, I come back. He gets a little fidgety because it's hard. You kind of see he's like got ants in his pants. It's just puppy brain. Good. Down. Good boy. Oh, fixing it. Yeah, good boy. Good job. A little more heel. Then we just go back into the heel. Now, because I'm working on steak commands and they're a little harder, um, I always release him when I come up to him. Good boy. So I don't call him out of it, if that makes sense. I just come up basically put him in a position heel position. Um, now I know that you said he was getting a little bit spooked from time to time with things. I haven't seen too too much of it but there might be some things that we can do to help prevent that and that's just correcting the lack of focus. So if he loses focus what I do like here's a good distraction right here we got kids on scooters. Um, if I see that he loses focus I step away use e collar that's a motivator for him to get back in position and pay attention. When he's giving me this focus again, boomer, he's like, I'll down. You asked me to lay down last time. Good job. Then, uh, yeah, so, so that there's a little bit of accountability and then a reward to follow up. So if I move away, what I'm doing is creating space for him to get back into the heel position. So I don't correct him for not looking at me within the heel. I only move away if he does it because he's disengaged with me, then I'm gonna correct that behavior. I hope that makes sense. Um, it feels counterintuitive because there's so many moving parts with it. Good job, buddy. I like this little, little well, where I'm from, we call it a cove, but pull the sack. Boomer, down. Good job, buddy. Good little kid crying. I mean, that's not good, but it's a good distraction. That made me sound mean. That's good. <laughs> that's no bueno. Good job, buddy. Good bike. Sometimes they make him nervous. I come up, reward him for staying. Boomer down. Little tap for the elbows coming up. Good. This stuff will, will settle over time. He's a puppy. It's to be expected. We just keep being consistent, keep following through. And he gets better and better every time. This is this is a really good session for him because there's oh, my bad. <laughs> All my shaky camera work. There's a whole family right there. Boomer, heel. Good job, buddy. Good. So what I'm gonna do is just maintain focus. So when I come into situations where they are distracting, maybe he gets spooked, maybe he doesn't. I mean, heel. Boomer, heel. Good job, buddy. I know we practice on so many downs, it's hard to distinguish what we're doing, huh? Um, but I want to just make sure he can maintain focus on me. And that's a lot of the times me leaving him and having him do the work.
work to get it. So I leave. He also does love little kids, so I don't perceive him getting scooped right now. I actually perceive him being excited to say hi to them. But I treat it the same because with service dogs, they need to be neutral to the environment that they're in. Good job. Good boy. Hi, Matthew. But we took him to the bookstore. I know you saw that picture. We're going to do another field trip tomorrow with him, so I'll get a good video of that. But he had so much fun. I needed a good read. I got a good book, so he came with me. At this point in the training, I'm going to start taking him. One more heel. Good boy. Heel. Good boy. Nice. A little correction there, so I didn't leave the heel position, but he did. So, left the heel position. He, whether I leave it or he leaves it, he collar comes, he collar button comes down. Good job. He's working on an eight right now. Uh, but anyway, so so for most of my trips um, out in public, I'm going to start taking him with me. So the state of Utah, most states um, give service dogs the same public access rights as a as a fully trained service dog. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean housing where you guys are homeowners, you don't have to worry about that. But like if you were renting or Peyton went off to live in his on his own, sometimes there's um, loopholes you got to work through. We can talk about that. But as far as like going into Walmart, those things, he has every right to be in there as long as I'm doing my part to make sure he's not sniffing produce or food or merchandise or you know pooping inside or something i mean that's my responsibility to make sure that he's pottied and ready to go good job buddy but um yeah so really good for him to just get out that exposure and be exposed to lots of things good job boomer we'll try another down boomer down down good boy good job buddy you're so cute. Boomer Hill. Maddie did such a good job getting you a bath, huh?